Thank you so much. We really wanted to find ways for you to take home something from the African continent. So once again, I'm Lauren. I'm the Director of Public Programs for the Brooklyn Museum. And it is now my pleasure to introduce a music video night. How many of y'all have been to a music video night before? Oh my gosh, welcome. How many of y'all have been to the Brooklyn Museum before? Okay, yes, that's what I like to see. Okay, well, we're gonna put you on. Um, launched in Los Angeles in 2016, Music Video Night is a first of its kind live platform for video creators. Its monthly events have been featured nationwide, exploring the work of creatives from every discipline through the lens of video. Hosted by Leilani Marie and Greg Kaysen of Mass Appeal, we have had the pleasure of collaborating um, for some of our other special exhibitions over the years, including our David Bowie with the late Mick Rock, who was a great collaborator and friend of, of David Bowie. And we're so excited to welcome them back. Um, first up, we're gonna hear from the unstoppable, incomparable, Meiji Alabi. Please give it up for him. If you're not aware, he is a Grammy Award winning Nigerian British director, renowned filmmaker, photographer, and producer. His celebrated music videos include cinematic pieces for Burna Boy, Wizkid, Davido, and Tiwa Savage. Please put your hands together for our special guest, Meiji Alabi. Welcome. Grab a seat anywhere you like. All right. Yo, yo. Yo, thank you, Lauren. How's everybody doing tonight? Yo, at the count of three, tell me where you from. One, two, three. That's what's up. My name is Greg Kaysen. I'm from New York via California, working with Mass Appeal for Music Video Night. As Lauren mentioned, this is a platform that we've been doing since 2016, um, just celebrating different video creators from various genres, backgrounds and disciplines. And this is um, my colleague, Lelani Marie. Hello, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, yeah, I'm just super excited to talk to our two great and influential directors. And I hope you guys enjoy yourself. So thank you. And without further ado, we got the living legend here, Medji Alabi, make some noise. Woo! Yes, sir. Hello, hello everybody. Hi, thanks for coming out tonight. <laughs> All right, so Medji, you just flew in last night, right? You, came, you coming from London? Yeah, yeah, I just flew in from London. That's what's up. So you, you were originally born in London, right? But you've also grew up in Texas. Um, your family is Nigerian. Um, could you just talk a little bit about, you know, um, you know coming up in the UK and, and, and you know, moving around in, in the States and how some of those uh, different experiences helped to inspire you as an artist? Um, yeah, definitely, you know, thanks to, you know, my dad who's over there right now. Hey. Ooh, shout out, dad. <laughs> you know, I was, I was blessed to be able to, um, you know, travel a lot in my childhood, you know. So, you know, I grew up in London, but found my way into to Texas, you know, for all high school and that. And, um, but, you know, had a strong Nigerian upbringing. So, I think all of those things combined just, you know, shaped my view a little bit differently. Just, I guess somebody who was a... Uh, you know, I raised only in Nigeria. I was kind of raised strongly Nigerian outside of Nigeria. So, I, you know, I had to take those, um, those uh, you know, morals and I guess mm -hmm. lessons, you know, carry that with you to school, you know, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in Houston, Texas, and just, you know, I think that really, you know, shaped the way I thought, you know, especially, you know, having visited Nigeria a little bit later in life, mm -hmm. you know, but still feeling, you know, so like the culture is just deep within you because it's been instilled within you from your parents, you know, from my dad. So I think that when, you know, when I started creating, um, it helped a lot because it, it just shaped, you know, the way I made visuals a little bit differently to, you know, somebody who's, I guess, been exposed to the space for such a long time. So, uh, you know, it, it really, you know, gave me a different perspective on things. That's really beautiful. And being that now you're an award-winning director, producer, photographer, can you talk a little bit about how you first got your start and what 
inspired you to get into the arts to this level? Um, I mean, I, you know, I started off doing photography, you know, me and my friends, we had brands, you know, we were always into different things, so, you know, I just started taking pictures for them, and, you know, that turned into, hey, man, can you shoot my video, you know, and I just <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. learned how to shoot really quickly, <laughs> and um, linked up, eventually, you know, that, that just kind of snowballed into, into, um, you know, other music videos, like, kind of hood videos in the UK, in the UK, you would okay. go to, like, different hoods, you know, it'd be really dangerous oftentimes. And, you know, I'd shoot like three videos in a day. And then eventually I, you know, decided to move on from that. And, you know, I linked up with Jimmy, who's just over there, my producer. Woo. And, uh, you know, we created this company called JM Films, which, um, you know, it, it, we kind of invested heavily in the, in the Afrobeat scene, like early on, you know, mm -hmm. before, before it was cool, before people really even kind of knew what was up with it. And, um, right. you know, we were shooting you know, videos for, for all the artists from then. Mm -hmm. So I think that just, you know, Afrobeats blew up, as you know, and um, here we are today. That's beautiful. So we got a, you know, series of your videos, you know, your catalog is extensive. So, you know, we're just, you know, scratching the surface, um, you know, but the first video that we wanted to show is a Tiwa Savage, uh, 49.99. Um, and, you know, from what I understand, you know, there's some fella cootie inspiration, you know, from this. And could you just speak a little bit about, you know, fella as not only the king of Afrobeats, arguably, but also a fashion icon and, and maybe how that he influenced you? Um, I mean, I think just just being brave with your creative creativity and like who you are um, is, you know, what I mainly took from, you know, from fella as well. You know, my dad always mentions how, you know, he was just kind of just a trailblazer and he did his own thing and, you know, and I think that kind of helped influence, you know, especially when I'm, when I'm creating just, I don't really like look at too many other things, you know, I mean, of course we have references in that, but, um, you know, it depends on how you, how you, how you live, you know, within them and, and how that, I guess, comes through you and you express it to the world. Um, so, you know, for, for me, him just being who he was and, you know, as brave as he was helps, helps a creative just know that, you know, you just have to stick with your own vision when you're, when you're, when you're making something. So when creating 49.99, um, you know, it was what you referenced about, you know, the, the, the buses and, and the, um, you know, the 49-seater bus filled with 99 people, which is kind of an expression of Nigeria's over, like, suffering in a sense. Um, you know, when we were making that video, just collaborating with Tiwa, and we just tried to take references from all these, you know, different, um, these different, I guess, Af African art, um, you know, from the Elliot Eliofson photos, those are the girls in the school dresses, um, to, it's actually a Sheon Kuti album, where with the, with the motorcycle, um, where she's with the motorcycles and the girl in the black, in the black and white scenes in the film. So just try to, to the Dambe boxes at the beginning, um, just bringing all these different parts of the culture together, you know, contemporary stuff too. You have the Danfos at the end and just um, putting it into one and, you know, giving that to the world in a different way. And I, I don't know if everybody always sees all the references, but, you know, they experience them and, uh, in their own way and it's, it's, I think that's a good thing, yeah. So, I really want to dig into the fashion and the hair and the style. But before we do, I feel like it's unfair to unrecognize this beautiful fit that you have going on. So I'd love for you to do a fit check of your own, talk about where you got your pieces from, your inspiration for coming here today, because this is fire. <laughs> well, I mean, love, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, well, uh, the top, I guess, um, I an official, you know, he's my homie, he's a okay. you know, Nigerian designer, um, he made both of these, so appreciate him, you know, <laughs> I an official, y'all check him out, um, he's really cool, he's a rip and dip, actually, so these are like oh, a LA funny. brand, and uh, I think the shoes, you know, the shoes are actually, you know, quite interesting, you know, you would think they were like Gucci or Prada or something, mm -hmm. but I actually got them in, a, I was in Kwara State in Nigeria, uh, visiting my grandfather just like oh, wow. about a month ago. And you know, a local, a local designer uh, came through, you know, he just 
he, he makes all my grandpa's shoes and he, you know, he drew, drew around my feet, like, you know, to measure them. Like, didn't, like, take proper measurements, just, like, drew around it with a, with a pen on a piece of paper. And he took it, you know, took it away and came back, like, you know, a couple of days later, we were with these. So, you know, thank That's you, beautiful. Grandpa. And, so you know, literally made yeah. for you. Yeah, 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 made for me. So, I That's mean, when I get back, you know, I'm going to get some more. Cause, yeah, uh, for sure. You know, fly. I'm feeling them. <laughs> so there's no brand name, sorry, but no. when, you're, when you're in Quara State, you can... You can get them for sure. I'll, I'll give you the contact. <laughs> um, so, yeah, with that being said, we are here in conjunction with Africa Fashion. And I feel like this video is, when it comes to the looks and just even the different scenes and how you pair the um, wardrobe with the scenes is very well put together, very intentional. So could you just talk about what that process was like and how in-depth do you go with stylists and, you know, just with that team when shooting videos like this? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for music videos, obviously, the, you know, um, so it's such a visual thing that, you know, styling is one of the main things that we always, you know, take into consideration. Um, you have to. Um, so, you know, we always break down the scenes, we break down the looks for the scenes, and, you know, it's from treatment level, you kind of know what you want, and then, you, you know, you partner with the stylist to, to help bring it to life. And obviously, the artist, you know, has a lot has a lot of input in that as well, you know. Sometimes I ain't, I ain't wearing that, you know what I mean? Or, you know, oh, I wanna wear this, you know, I think this should look like this. And, you know, me and the artists have a back and forth and we get to the right, we get to the right, um, you know, to the right place. And Tiwa is always very, um, you know, she's, she's a trailblazer herself, so she's, she's willing to, um, you know, take a leap, you know, do something a bit wild. You know, in this video, she wasn't wearing anything where that where she had um you know where she had her hair when she was laying out. It was all about you know kind of like the the super long braids and 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 that feel and um you know. And so sometimes you know it's, they can wear less too. <laughs> but, less um, is more. Yeah. yeah, you know sometimes less is more. I mean, if it if it serves the purpose of you know what we were trying to do, and like I said, you know the schoolgirl look was you know a big reference um uh from you know this one image I saw and then I realized it was a series of images and I just thought, oh wow, this is incredible. You know, I just want to bring this back to life. Do you know what I mean? In a, in, a, in a modern way. And then, you know, we kind of elevated that with, you know, putting the money in the hair and the multiple sunglasses looks and all of those things. So, um, yeah, you know, I think styling is, is everything in, when it comes to these music videos. 100%. So the next video that we're going to show um, is the Davy Doe featuring Popcorn, um, the Dun Rich. And, you know, this one, you know, in addition to having an exquisite style, also has ill locations. And I wanted to ask you about, you know, your location scouting and, and, and how you, you know, go about finding these places um, and any experiences you might have had maneuvering through different uh, cities and, and, and locations. Yeah, man. Um about like some of those locations, you know, a lot of that was actually shot at the National Stadium. Um, you know, I used to want to be a professional footballer when I was younger. First time I went moved to Nigeria, or not moved, first time I went to Nigeria, second time, you know, I was training a lot. So I would run from the house, and uh, we, have a, we had a family house in Surulere, and I would go jogging to the National Stadium, you know, and I, obviously, because, you know, I don't, I like, speak pidgin and, you know, not that good and all that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't really talk to many people because <laughs> you don't want people to catch you out and be like, yo, like, where, where are you from, you know, so I would just, I would just, um, I would just jog and, like, train with, like, all the guys around the stadium, so I kind of got an idea of, you know, the vibe around there, and, and I re and, um, I saw the location, you know what I mean? And I think I just logged that in my head. I don't think I shot this video, it's like for a long time after that, maybe like 2017 or 18 or something like that. But um, I had been there a few times. Uh, so, you know, for me, I don't really enjoy like studio shoots as much, um, just because, you know, I like to be in the mix. I like to explore different places, see different people, meet different people. And, you know, when you do, when you're on recce's, you get to see so much. You know, just location scouting. You might not even use that location, but you'll be there with, with people and just learn so much about each different each space. And um, like I said, you just log that in your head, and in the future, you might just pull up there. So, I mean, with this video, um, you know, it took place at Tarqua Bay, you know, a place um, where you, people go surfing in Nigeria, um, and it's like one of like the, the 
kind of more local but cool beaches um, that, you, that you see there. And uh, the National Stadium from the two places I can think of uh, off the top that you know, we shot this video. So um, yeah. So this video showcases the beautiful different cultural aspects of Nigeria. And I feel like all of your work does that as a whole. Um, but one thing that I really wanted to ask you was, as someone who is Nigerian, how important is it for you to kind of use your work as a vessel for Nigerian art, Nigerian culture? And honestly, not just Nigerian, but just African art and African culture as a whole. Um, you know, I think it, you know, it's, it was, you know, at, especially at the time, you know, it was super important because, you know, there were a lot of, you know, misconceptions and preconceptions, you know, about, about, you know, what Africa, what Nigeria is and was, you know, up to this day, people are still scared to go, you know, like, oh, Nigeria, you know, is it safe there? You know, I mean, that still happens. You still get that question. You know, and um, you know, a lot of people are actually, even including Nigerians themselves. Again, I'll say thanks to my dad because you know, a lot of my friends and like you know, contemporaries and people like that, especially in the UK, you know, their parents don't speak well of Nigeria. You know, they were maybe escaping Nigeria or like not, you know, they don't have like good memories of it, so they don't encourage their children to go back and to go and explore and see where you're from, and um, you know, and also see what opportunities are there for you. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, my dad was very, you know, adamant. And, you know, he was always spoke greatly about Nigeria. So when I went there, I didn't go there from a place of, you know, fear. But I went there in a position of power, you know, on the inside anyway. And so I, I, I could go there and create freely, you know. So I feel like, you know, it's, it's important for me to be able to show others that, yo, you know, this is, this is home. Mm -hmm. You know, home is beautiful. And... Um, you know, and I'm thankful that, you know, Nigerian artists themselves are also, you know, so big, you know, that um, that gives you more opportunities elsewhere. You know, we, at one point, you know, we weren't even shooting in Nige to start because, you know, production wasn't great there. So a lot of Nigerian artists would fly to South Africa. They'd fly to London to shoot. So I, I would, I'd started off from London with them. Then I started flying to South Africa. So I got exposed to, you know, Johannesburg, Cape Town, a lot of South Africa. And then, you know, we, like I said, we started JM Films, which really changed like the landscape of, you know, of production in, in Nigeria. So then we can now produce really great, great, great work there and great videos there um, on a regular basis. So, um, you know, it actually kind of brought me full circle and, you know, showed me a lot of the continent, you know, thankfully because of that, you know, I've been to, you know, quite a lot of African countries that I probably would have never been to before. So I think through the work, you know, displaying um, the beauty, displaying the people, you know, the good and the bad, the vibes, you know, sometimes we're shooting in the hood. You know, I've, I've had videos, you know, in like the most greedy areas you know, of, of Lagos, a place called Shita, you know, that was, uh, it was a Casanova video I had with the hyenas and all that, you know what I mean? But that's also a part of the culture. You know, those guys come from the north, there's a lot of mysticism around them. So that, you know, I think, you know, people see that, they get interested, they do their research, you know, and they learn more. So, you know, I'm glad that I'm one of the many vessels that are able to do that. And I feel like that's what makes your work so compelling, right? Because you're not afraid to go to the gritty areas. You're not afraid to show all different aspects of your beautiful country. So I feel like that's why you're considered a pioneer in like Afrobeats and oh, like directing you. because of how raw you are as an artist. So yeah, that's really Appreciate beautiful. It. No problem. The next video is the, the Monsters You Made by Burn a Boy featuring Chris Martin. Um, you know, in this one, obviously has a strong message politically. Um, I believe you made it over the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, and, and could you speak a little bit about, you know, um, putting political messages, you know, through your work and how, how, how important you think that is um, as a director? Um, you know, I guess that kind of goes back to the fella thing that we were talking about, about just being fearless and just, you know, creating what you want to make and, uh, you know, not really being too worried about you know, what's on the other side of that, you know, because you got to stay true to the art, you know, and I think I don't really, you know, I'm not really thinking too much about anybody else when I'm writing something. It's kind of just coming from the mind. You know, you listen to the music, 
and then you, you know, you get inspired and you, and you write. And um, it's funny because that song, um, you know, it was before you know, Nigeria went through the whole NSARS thing, which was, you know, it was a real rough situation. And um, I had written that video before all of that happened, but it was like a few months later, you know, it was like almost some self-fulfilling prophecy that, you know, and um, it, was, it was really, it was really interesting, you know, and uh, that, that whole period. So I feel that, um, yeah, man, you just, just gotta do your thing fearlessly, you know what I mean? And, and if, you, if, it's, if, it's, if it's a political message that you're trying to, trying to, um, you know, trying to, I guess, come across, then, then that, that is what it is. But, you know, I don't, it's not by force, you know what I mean? I think it's just, you know, some videos, you just feel a certain type of way when you hear the song, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what to do, I know what to do for this. And for that, you know, I knew what to do. The storytelling in this piece was so profound. Um, and when translate, no problem. <laughs> And when conveying messages like these and telling stories like these, you already touched a little bit about it prior to us um, showing the video, but if you could dive a little bit deeper into how you conceptualize these projects and how involved the artists may be, and would you say that you lead with emotion or do you have a specific scene in mind and you just build around that? Like what's your conceptually, sorry, what's your concept process? Um, I know that was a loaded question, so you could yeah. take your time. <laughs> I mean, for this for this video, you know, I just you know, I think I knew Berna wanted something real. You know, he's like, "Yo, I want something real for this." You know, I was like, "Yeah, cool." And uh, so I kind of you know knew what I wanted to do there. You know, it's kind of just about you know youth being unhappy with you know the situation and, and like you know obviously they they rob this money but it's not for themselves you know they they burn it to show that, that they don't care about like they're trying to make a statement you know what i mean so for for me um you know when i when i uh, you know I, it always starts with the music you know i let the music lead you know uh and uh i kind of sit in front of like just a notepad on on the computer and just you know it, hopefully it, it comes to me you know like and then I, I, I start writing, you know, I don't, I'm not like a heavy, like image person. I don't like, like troll images and then just like come up with the ideas. It kind of goes the other way around, you know what I mean? And I, I, I like that because, you know, I feel like it's come from the soul, right. you know what I mean? And that's why I can, uh, you know, whether it's a, a narrative or, you know, um, kind of more documentary type like Dunrich or, you know, beauty or, uh, more like kind of like 49.99 even though that one has some references in it it's, it's kind of you know I, I think it's different each each um each video you know you approach it you listen to the music and you kind of approach it differently um whichever way it hits you you know what i mean but it has to the music has to touch you and then from there i feel like creating creating is easier do you know what i mean but um if, if it doesn't touch you then you know sometimes maybe it's not for you you know i feel that <laughs> You know, I noticed uh, in your catalog, you have a lot of love story videos. And I wanted to ask, you know, what it is about kind of telling those stories that, you know, resonates with you and how you approach that in your work. It's interesting you say that, you know, I think, I think I'm a lover boy at heart. So I just, Aren't kinda, we all? <laughs> you know, in my mind anyway. So um, I, I, I do like a lot. I do like, you know, tell those stories, you know, even like one video that I'm going to do very soon is, is like that, you know. Yeah, I think it's like you're telling the same story over and over again, but in a different way. Maybe I'm trying to find love. I don't know, you know. The next one is this Wiz Kid featuring Burner Boy, the ginger. Um, I think Leilani, you had a question for this? Yes. So in terms of color, this video is very warm. There's a lot of browns, creams, golds, reds. It's at the forefront of the color palette. Um, so can you just talk about what the inspiration was behind this creative decision? Um, I think, you know, Africa is a warm place. You know, Nigeria is a warm place. And, uh, you know, ginger alone, it's, it's actually a warm color itself. 
<laughs> so I think, you know, all, a, a lot of those things combined and, you know, also the, like, the, the reddish brown, like, you know, mm -hmm. mud, dirt tone, uh, the blocks that we use for building, yes. you know, and how they're laid out when, um, when you, like, manually make them. If you, you'll see it as you drive around Nigel, you know, you know, the, the, the blocks, they, like, make them and they just, like, lay them out, like, separately, like, you know. All these little things, um, I guess, influence that. And then, you know, just adding a high fashion element to that um, is kind of how we approached the video. It was, it was uh, you know, uh, minimalistic, but at the same time, you know, we had two African giants um, with Burnout and Wiz, you know, one of their first collaborations together. And, and they're, you know, they're both still on top of their game. So, you know, it was just an iconic moment. And, you know, I didn't want to do too much around it, but I wanted to let them kind of just own and share that spotlight together. And I think they, you know, they, they killed it. That song just be making me want to dance every time I listen to it. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and you touched on this before. You worked with Wizkid and Burna Boy, the African Giants, and you've worked with both of them um, a number of times. So if you could just talk about what that experience was like and what that dynamic is like, and also what you've learned from them both. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm lucky to be surrounded by greatness and have, you know, great people around me and, you know, and, and I've known them both for, you know, a long time. You know, when Wizkid very first came to London, I think 2011, his very first tour, Superstar Tour, you know, I was at the airport with my camera, you know, uh, filming, you know, me and Jimmy did, the doc did a little documentary, um, you know, so that was actually the first time we had met. Um, and you know, throughout the years, you know, known him, and then we started shooting videos together, which was really cool. And, um, you know, he knows what he wants. He's, a, he's, a, he's obviously great at what he does, and that's why he's been on top for so long. So, you know, collaborating with him, well, you know, was great th throughout um, that period. Being able to shoot so many videos with him, you know, was, was amazing. And same with Berna, you know, we shot On The Load together, which was, you know, the, one of the videos that helped blow him up as well. And then just from there, we've been collaborating over the years. Um, and like I said, you know, they both are so good at what they do that, you know, I think, and they're both so great on camera. So it's like the ultimate palette to work with as a director, you know, and, you know, not everything, you know, they won't, probably won't want to do everything that I want to do all the time, but, you know, they, there's a reason why that they are who they are. And I think that's because, you know, they know where to place themselves, you know, so you just have to, as a creative, um, understand how to create around them as best as possible and place them in a position that they look great. And I think I'm quite good at that. And uh, yeah, it works well. Can you expand on that? Can you expand on that a little bit? Because I feel like even as a creative myself and I'm sure the other creatives will be able to relate, um, we can have one idea, but then as we start to collaborate or if we're working with a client, then their ideas and their opinions get in the mix and then we could feel like our concept is losing some of its integrity. So can you just talk about having to work around the artist while still keeping your vision intact and your integrity as an artist intact as well? Yeah, I mean, I think trust is an important thing. You know, the artist has to trust you. And, you know, luckily enough, you know, a lot of the times, you know, they trust the vision of what I'm trying to achieve. You know, also being able to get your vision across clearly, you know, and, you know, sit down and talk with the artist, you know, understand where they're coming from and what they want to do, you know. You know, certain people don't want to go too far. They don't want to be too funky. You know, they just want to be cool, you know. And, and other people are like, yo, you know, I want to be this character for this video. And, you know, I think you have to understand that, um, and work with them, you know, it's not all about you. Um, I think a lot of directors, you know, got to understand that too. You know, s some people say, um, you know, you know, the music comes first, that's why music, you know, video, you know, and uh, I think, yeah, you know, it, it's true. And um, if you listen to them and then internalize what they're thinking, then go back as a director and internalize your thoughts and say, okay, how can I, how can I bring these two things together? you know, harmoniously, you know, in a way that, you know, represents them the best, you know, promotes them the best 
while at the same time not being generic and not being, you know, not being like, um, you know, not impressing yourself, not challenging yourself. You know, with every video that, you know, I've shown here tonight, you know, uh, um, and just in general that I shoot, you know, I'm always trying to challenge myself. I'm not trying to do a walk in the park. You know, I'm not trying to just do something real quick and easy because I know how to do it. You know, I know how to do that if I really want to do that. But then that's boring. And then, you know, that's how you become generic and that's how you, you know, end up just doing the same thing over and over again. And then, you know, that's how you fall off. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for me, I'm always like trying to, um, you know, even if it means shooting less, I'd, I'd rather do that and challenge myself than... Uh, just be shooting like every week and doing the same thing, you know? So I think just having integrity with what you want to do and um, also being brave but not being an ass mm. about it to the artist, you know, rubbing them the wrong way. You can yeah. find the balance. Yeah. For sure. So in addition to being a Grammy-winning music video director, you're also an award-winning commercial director. And the next piece that we're going to show is a film you did for Guinness which is uh, Black Shine's Brightest. It's an incredible, incredible spot. Can you talk about how you took some of your learnings from the video world into the commercial world? You know, maybe what are some of the challenges that you face, you know, creatively as we're discussing? Um, by that whole world, you've done work with Oreo, other major brands. So I um, would love to hear that side of you as a, as a director. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, over the past couple of years now, I've been blessed to be able to, you know, take the talents that, and, the, and the skill sets that I learned in music videos and kind of transfer them over. And, um, you know, I think that's, you know, it's, it's been a blessing, but, you know, I, music videos, they say, is like the best training ground, you know, for um, when it comes to commercials. I guess maybe even documentary and then eventually film because you're kind of free to do whatever you want to do. Do you know what I mean? And then when you go into commercial world, you know, you're working for a brand, you know, but you're able to use these cool techniques or, you know, camera tricks or, you know, your sense of style, your sense of fashion or your sense of uh, movement, you know, dance and all that in, the, in, um, in commercials. And um, oftentimes there's a lot more budget for it as well, which means that, and a little bit more time because you're making a shorter piece. You know, you're making something that's 30, maximum 90 seconds long most of the time compared to a music video where you got like one day to shoot three minutes, maybe two days if you're lucky to shoot three and a half minutes. You know, if the artist is me, you know, you're like four and a half minutes, you know what I mean? You're like, damn, that's a lot. But you know, um, yeah, so I think, you know, music videos, I mean, commercials, you know, give you that. Music videos is a training ground and commercials is a place where you can kind of get to, you know, flex all that knowledge with more budget and um, no artist, so you don't really have divas, you know, or artists showing up like, you know, a couple hours late, because oftentimes on music videos, you know, a lot of people don't know that we're on the back foot most of the time, um, working against, you know, the artist's whims. You know, if the artist shows up three hours late, you know, as a music video director, you're now shuffling your day a couple hours back, do you know what I mean, to make sure things work. Um, so it can be a bit, it can be a bit, uh, Difficult, but on commercials and stuff, you don't have those same, those same woes. You know what I mean? One thing I thought that was interesting about this commercial was you mentioned that you did some street casting, right? So were you just bringing, um, how did that kind of work, you know, knowing that sometimes brands want to make sure everything is signed off, and how did you kind of uh, cast in that regard? Yeah, I think um, that's where, like, the music video aspect comes in, because, you know, a lot of, like, Sometimes when I'm shooting, you know, I see somebody on the road, you know, that I like, especially in Nige, because, you know, there's so much color, so many personalities, you know, um, like in the Dunridge video, you know, a lot of like, I, I just, you know, grab shots of like a lot of different people that I just happen to like when I see them walking by, you know, so, um, you know, I have a great team, like I said, so, you know, on something like Guinness, we're shooting in Lego Island, which is, you know, uh, just an eclectic place, so, you know, it's busy, loads of people, you know, walking around, beautiful colors, and um, you know, if I see him, I'm just like, yo, that lady over there, like, yo, she looks sick, yo, yo, go, go talk to her, see if she wants to be a part of it, you know, and then, you know, we get them to sign the release forms and everything, you know, and, and, the, and I think the client just gives me the freedom because, um, you know, I think they think I have good taste, you know, <laughs> so, so they, they, they let me, um, they kind of let me do what I need to do. 
and um, trust that it's going to be nice, you know, and it will be nice. And something that's really cool about that, I mean, is that um, a lot of them, like even the dancer in that video, you know, he he's a he's a dancer from Ghana that I that I use, you know, and I brought him over to Nigeria for the shoot. You know, in another edit of that, there's Fireboy and him together. So it's, you know, music. The music for the, that piece, we, we like, kind of commissioned it and made it with Chopsticks, who, um, you know, did Kilo Me, Kilo Me, and all these songs with um, Burna Boy. So, you know, using, like, you know, even, like, my music video connections and stuff like that, you know, we designed, like, the whole world around that commercial as well. So I think, you know, that's just another way that the, the worlds collide. You know, so a lot of the commercials I, I do now, you know, I just did a Coke Zero one, I just did, I did a Fanta one last year. We actually make the music for it as well, which is, which is quite cool. Yeah. That's what's up. And with that being said, you touched on this prior, but you were saying how you had many jobs within the film industry and video industry from producing, you did some editing, you're directing. If you can just talk about the importance of kind of wearing multiple hats so that when you do direct, you're able to delegate properly or you're able to fully communicate your vision, like how important is, is it for you to know about these different areas? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's, one of the most important things, you know, I, when I was, you know, wearing those hats, I was actually doing it for myself most of the time. So like, I would go out and like make everything happen and I'd do everything because I had to, do you know what I mean? But just taking that um, self-reliance, you know, uh, you know, no one's gonna edit my video, so I had to edit it, no one's gonna grade it, so I had to grade it. You know, it, it just gives you that depth of knowledge that um, doesn't allow people to, I say, pull the wool over your eyes. Do you know what I mean? Like an editor telling you, oh, you can't do that. Or a colorist telling you, oh, it can't look like that. You know what I mean? And you're thinking like, I, yeah, I know it can look like that, bro. You know, I know I can do that. You know, I know that it works this way. Do you know what I mean? And it just empowers you, you know what I mean? So the more knowledge you have, you know, um, the more equipped you are as a director. There's no certain way to be a director. and. With that being said, like, you don't need to know all of this stuff to be a director, you know? If you have a good team around you, you can be a writer, you know? You, you know, because when one of my first, you know, mentors or whatever, you know, I had pulled up to his set to shoot, like, a little behind the scenes, you know? And um, I had given him my camera, and he took my camera, and I he couldn't even, he didn't know how to use it, right? And I was like... In my head, I was like, oh, I look up to you, bro. Like, how do you not know how to use my camera? You know what I mean? And then we were sitting in the car later on, and he told me, like, yo, man, you know, a director is like, you know, he's more of a writer. He's a thinker. Do you know what I mean? He's, he has, he's an ideas guy. Do you know what I mean? And that day, like, totally changed everything for me, because then I thought about it, and I was like, you know, I need to be an ideas guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I need to have ideas. I, it's not just about how technical I am, how, how well I can shoot, or, you know, how well I can expose, or all of that, I need to have ideas, you know, so I, I kind of, that changed, you know, that, you know, that changed a lot for me. So I feel like, you know, although it's great to have technical knowledge across the board, it's not a necessity to be a director if you have good people around you who can help you with your editing or who can help you with your grading, you know, and then you eventually, you find the best in each field and you can focus in on what you're the best at. You know, some directors come from a styling background, some directors come from choreography and dancing and movement, you know, and, and you can see that in their work. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. That's dope. And just to connect it back to the Guinness commercial, one thing that really stood out to me was how you married the visuals to the voiceover um, and I just want to recite it really quickly. Black is bold, black is color, your thing, my thing, our thing mixed together, black shines brightest. So with that in mind, and just thinking of the richness of the Pan-Africa diaspora, what intersectionalities do you find you gain inspiration from as an ideas guy, as a creator? Ask that again. Basically, that was a long-winded way of asking, where do you gain inspiration from? What other cultures and what other places do you gain inspiration from? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, inspiration, I mean, it, sound, it sounds lame, but, you know, I mean, and whatever. But, like, I think in, for me, it just comes from, like, you know, I travel a lot. You know, I'm, 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 I'm always moving around. Um, and I'm always seeing things, you know. I spend a lot of time in Niger. I spend a lot of time in Ghana. I spend a lot of time, you know, on the road in general. So, like, I, I literally see, like, random things on the street sometimes and just log it, take a picture, you know, put it in my mind. The way, way people do things, you know, I, I pay attention, a lot of attention to, you know, details and um, incorporate them, you know, within, within the videos. Like, I was telling you about Ginger and, like, the blocks and the bricks. And, you know, in, in Ghana, they have these aboboyas. I shot a video called Aboboya earlier this year with, you know, Popcorn and Burner. And, like, you know, they, they over, like, they, I often see, like, they overload them. You know, you know the overloaded vehicles you see in, in, in Niger and stuff, and, but like in these Abobi, I say little tricycles with like trunks on the back or boots on the back and overload them and you'll, you'll see them like, like that on the road. And the person's like, ah, you know, like on the street like, damn, like I messed up, man. You know, and, I, and, I, and it looks a certain way. So, I, you know, I used that in the video just recently and I just, I just, um, just pay attention. I think, you know, the world is happening around us and there's a lot of inspiration we can take from you know, just people and things that are happening. And that's kind of where it comes from. And uh, life lessons as well. And yeah, it's, it's the truth. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So in the interest of time, um, we wanted to open this up to the audience to let y'all have a opportunity to ask a few questions. Um, we got about 10 more minutes. So please um, raise your hand. And um, I believe Lauren could drop a mic, or if you want to just say the question out. Right there. Um, thank you for the talk. I actually have a question that's kind of a riff off of your question, specifically with hip hop culture, because I noticed that in a lot of the videos there are parallels to, uh, or reference, mm, I guess, connections to hip hop culture. And I wonder, um, in your approach and the artist's approach, I think it's really cool to see that connection between Afrobeats artists and black American culture as well. And I wonder how intentional is that? Is that something that's top of mind for you? Is it top of mind for the artists? And how do you go about kind of conceptualizing that in the work? It's a, uh... <laughs> I mean, I, I won't lie to you. I don't really like use hip hop culture too much in, in, um, in, in for Afrobeat. So for the videos that I do, you know, I wasn't really looking that way, you know. And I won't say that it wasn't. I won't say that it wasn't inside me because you know we did grow up watching these videos. Do you know what I mean? Like them early Busta videos and like Missy videos and all that stuff. So, but like when I'm speaking with the artists, I'm not like. Um, Yo, we gotta do it like 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 they did it, or you know, like it doesn't. I don't really have those conversations with them about about hip hop culture. You know, I know like you know, Burner's latest stuff is kind of like very you know, very um, you know, New York old school hip hop vibes, and I know that was the intention that they were going for that. But you know, when we were shooting, we were just really like on the Africa wave. You know, what I mean, and that's the truth. Um, but with that, with, you know, like I said, like some of my favorite videos, you know, come from, you know, early hip hop era. You know, I love them. And um, I feel like subconsciously you probably be, you know, using that as like a internal reference without even knowing. But I don't really like, you know, with the artists, it's not, it's not a thing for, with me anyway. So we got time for two more questions. My man right here in the red hat. Oh, yeah. Hi, thank you so much for sharing your experience and your work. Um, so I'm curious from your experience as a director, going from being a photographer, what are some things you learned throughout your career that you um, think are helpful to know? Um, and maybe some lessons you wish you knew early on that you learned later that would have been more helpful. Um, yeah, thank you, man. I think... Uh you know, that filmmaking is a collaborative effort. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you 
you know, without a great team, it's hard to make, you know, amazing, amazing work. You know, that's why I'm always thankful to, you know, my producer, you know, Jimmy over there, you know, um, and, and the team, you know, they, they really uh, allow me to create freely. And um, so I think, you know, finding your people is important. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not something that you can do on your own. Um, and, you know, collaborating with them properly, um, I think that will, will uh, you know, catapult you and give you the, uh, you know, the rocket fuel to, to really create. Um, so I think that's one of the things I, I've, you know, I've learned um, as, a, as, a, as a, one of the things I wish I knew earlier. Um, but I think, you know, everything in God's time. So I'm happy that, you know, I had the time to train, you know, had the time to be in the trenches uh, on my own. So when I, when I figured it all out, then when I found the right people, it came together nicely. So I think that's, that's one thing. We have one last question in the, from the white. Hi, uh, my question is kind of about um, culture and creativity. I assume you were raised internationally, but still were connected to your roots. Um, there is kind of that first generation thing where you're kind of on the, the threshold of understanding your culture, but at the same time being outside of it. And I'm kind of curious about your experience and your journey creatively when you started stepping into the African um, music video scene and were you intimidated in any way? Did you find that you needed to like reconnect with your culture and understand it in a different way that you didn't know how to kind of really display? Or did you find that because you had this kind of um, different perspective than a lot of the people that may have already just been back home, you were able to add a new light to a lot of your um, videos and just the people you work with kind of bring a new fresh voice to the diaspora and how it's depicted in music videos? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, it's a great question. I think, you know, I was, you know, lucky enough to be, you know, accepted. Uh, I think, you know, I was culturally sense enough, sensitive enough, you know, and trained well, to, you know, to understand what to do and kind of what not to do and how far I could push in, you know, what would be accepted by the audience and, you know, what would be looked at by the audience as, you know, maybe a bit weird or, you know, they weren't ready for that yet. You know what I mean? So, you know, I was lucky enough that, that um, I was able to, to do that at that time. Um, yeah, I think, I think having the, I also think that, you know, Nigerians, Africans are generally like, um, you know, international people, you know, we're, we're everywhere. Um, and what's, what's great about that is that, um, They didn't feel like, I felt that they appreciated, you know, my perspective on things. You know, they saw that, okay, you know, this guy is Nigerian, you know, but he's a little bit different. You know, I mean, he doesn't think exactly the same way as, as everybody here. Um, therefore, his visuals, you know, come across a little bit different um, to what's there. So, you know, for any other creative who, you know, has that, oh, am I, am I African enough, or am I Nigerian enough, or am I Ghanaian or Ugandan enough, or whatever, I think, you know, just, you know, lean into your strengths, know who you are, and, and then just create from there, and, you know, you should be all right. Um, and, you know, luckily enough, you know, that international perspective. And also, again, all the artists, their dream is to, to be global, you know what I mean? And, and um, you know, I was lucky enough to be raised as a global African, not, not you know, as a global African. And um, they, so my perspective, you know, kind of helped them shift from, you know, just not only a Nigerian audience, but to be accepted by, you know, a wider palette um, of, of people, so, you know, from all over the world. And yeah. Momeji, thank you so much for coming out and sharing your story and your work. We look forward Thank to you. seeing all your Thank next you. moves. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Been a pleasure. Thanks, everybody.